So these are some products that I'm currently selling on my Mercury account. So if you guys don't follow me, please do. I have a whole bunch of brand new products that I sell for the low. And here are some green goo products. I absolutely love them. If you'd like for me to do a product review, please leave a comment down below because I love this brand. And here I'm putting away some makeup brushes and this is a makeup look that I did with them. So if you're interested in some more makeup videos, let me know down below. And for those of you who know, I always have a nice self-care Sunday. So typically, I normally take a bath because it just helps alleviate all the stress, tension, and anxiety that I've endured throughout the week. Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Rachel. And in today's video, yes, I know, some tech content has been long overdue. So, as you guys know, on this channel, we cover all things tech and self-care. So if you are interested in some more tech content, please, please, please leave some comments down below so I know where your mind is. I know what type of content you want to see. So I know where to invest my time in. So if you are interested for some more QA content, I'm going to give you a few seconds to grab your snacks, tea, and I'd appreciate if you like this video before we get rolling. Okay, so a common question that I've seen you guys ask a lot throughout my quality assurance videos is what is the difference between a QA analyst and a QA engineer? So, I see this term loosely thrown around interchangeably at that too. So, I understand where the confusion is between, well, what is the difference between an analyst and an engineer? So, I'm going to go over a few things that I have noticed from my own experience, and I'm just going to be able to only provide my own interpretation, my own understanding, and my own knowledge. I will be leaving some further links down below in the comment section for some further reading if you're interested to hear some other people's perspective throughout the industry, but for today, I'm just going to be sharing my own knowledge from what I know, so let's dive into this. Now, when you look at the term QA analyst, what is the big thing there? Analyst. Think of ding, 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 analyze. So, when you think of an analyst, what are you doing mainly throughout your day? Well, you're analyzing the overall quality throughout the procedure, throughout the software development life cycle. And during this time, you're also analyzing the quality throughout your documentation, your test cases, and you're focusing more on that documentation portion. So, if we look at the term QA engineer, what stands out with that? I'm hoping a few lights go off here and engineer jumps out at you. Okay, so what exactly is an engineer supposed to be focused on? So QA engineer at that, the primary thing that they're going to be focusing on is the overall coding aspect of whatever software tools you're using, however you're writing your test cases, this is pretty much the key component difference, separation between the two of a QA engineer and a QA analyst. I'm assuming the next question some of you might be thinking is, Well, Rachel, if I'm a QA analyst, am I only doing documentation? Or, Rachel, if I'm just doing QA engineering, am I only going to be Programming? And don't get that misconfused. So, just because you're a QA analyst, that doesn't just limit you to only doing documentation. If you do QA analyst, sometimes there might be an opportunity to learn some programming aspects of the QA engineer side of things. And just because you're a QA engineer, Sometimes, sometimes, you're not always coding as much as you think. Sometimes you might be doing more of an analyst role, especially in your early phases of QA engineering. 
you're not going to just walk into a company and know how to program every and any. You're not going to know how to program every and anything right off the bat if this is your first time going into QA engineering or your first real job as a programmer itself. So there's baby steps to this and it is always a work in progress, but from my own understanding, that's the main difference between a QA analyst versus a QA engineer. So if you would like some further reading, of course I have provided that content down below in the description box for you guys because I think it's really important to gain insight and knowledge from other people's perspectives and I feel as though that's one of the best ways to learn in life is to learn as many different perceptions on one topic as you can get. So. Another thing at that too, why I emphasize that is because I didn't really understand the difference between all these different QA roles. I thought it was just all one thing. Same with being a developer. I thought just being a developer is one thing in itself. But apparently there's a whole bunch of different layers and roles to this. And same goes for quality assurance, which is often overlooked because if you think quality assurance, you just automatically assume it's just one thing, but once you take baby steps of curiosity into this field, you soon and quickly learn that, um, yeah, there's some layers to this, and there's more than one QA role out there in the industry, shall I say. So, I also wanted to include a little content in the beginning of just some of the things that I have done before I've recorded this video, every Sunday is self-care Sunday for me and it's very important to take care of yourself and to address everything. So, um, yeah, we can address this, so why not? Like, we can address the elephant in the room, trust me. I have, yo, I have tried a new toner and it has just broke my skin out, I've tried, like, some, I've tried a few products, I'm not gonna say them all right now because I don't want to ruin a future video topic if you guys are interested to know about this, but I have tried a couple new products in the past month, and sis, I am not happy, like, my skin really broke out, and I'm glad, like, it's getting a little bit better, but, oh my gosh, like, my whole face broke out really bad the other month from a few products. But if you're interested in that, let me know because if that's like a self-care topic I was thinking about, talking about some products that I've tried that I'm not big on, that I'm not a big fan on. But let me know. If you guys want self-care content, leave your comments down below. If you guys want some more tech content and how the industry's going, because I have seen some comments. I've, you know, another topic I was thinking of because I've seen you guys ask about How's the job industry? Um, something about like resumes and some programming languages. So let me know what you guys want down in the comment section because I'm always interested to know where your mind is because I want to know where to invest my time in at that. So we're not cutting this video short. We're not done yet. I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Gimmick. They have been featured in some of my videos before, and they are just a wonderful company. They always send me new, interesting things to try. Like, who would have thought today's video is going to be featuring some fancy, snazzy binoculars? So, if you're a company, you want me to test review a product, please feel free. Grab my email below. I'm always interested in reviewing some new products, especially self-care products at that too, because I worked with a company recently to review my first wig. And if you guys are interested on some wig reviews, please let me know your comments, thoughts down below, because I would be happy to post that video. It was my first time trying one on. And I'm gonna I'm post a little something around here so you guys can get a little snippet of what it looked like, but... And, if you aren't already a part of the family yet by now, what are you doing? Smack that subscribe button and bell notification button so you never miss another post from me again. I'll see you next time.